I figure it was time to actually showcase the new super weapons in Warpath 8.0 that is actually being patched in the game basically uh, tomorrow if I get this video up tonight uh, or it's already been patched in the game if I'm late. Uh, but I want to talk about what are the super weapons that are being released, uh, new structures, what it's going to cost, who can actually have them, what can you do with them, and maybe even my personal opinion on how I think this is going to affect the game. So in my base, I've lost the intro screen to the update here, but you basically have three new buildable structures inside your base. Yes, they have to be upgraded uh, from level one to level 32. We have the Super Alloy Foundry. There is a new resource in the game called Super Alloy. We'll look at that in a minute. We've got the Strategic Weapon Center where you actually do R&D. We'll show that in a minute as well. And we also have the Combat Hub. So what are super weapons? There are two super weapons being introduced into the game. The first one is called Sky Fortress. Okay. The second one is called a Titan. Okay. We'll talk about the Titan first. So the Titan is effectively a special kind of village. Okay. So just like you can select a village and build a central command, certain people within the Alliance, I believe security officers will be able to do it. And I can't show it because I'm on the test server. Um, I don't have 30 accounts to plug into a test alliance here, uh, but you would select a village and you would have the option to build a Titan and Titans effectively protect bases uh, within that village. So let's go back into the base, go to the combat hub, go to Titan. And basically there's no built in game help here. Uh, I missed the intro screen. So unfortunately I can't show that, uh, but effectively these protect bases within the immediate village, okay? Titans can only be destroyed by a Sky Fortress. You cannot destroy or attack Titans with normal army groups or units, okay? So that is what a Titan does. Uh, Titan has HP, um, it has a garrison capacity. You can garrison troops inside of it to make it more powerful. When you destroy a Titan, it turns back into a regular village. I'm assuming a village that you own, uh, but I, again, I cannot actually show that. So that brings us to maybe this, and by the way, I think Titans will be the more useful super weapon in the game, especially in the theater of conquest. But that brings us to the Sky Fortress super weapon, uh, which is actually a new form of army group or rally, and we'll show that. But Sky Fortresses also have HP. You can see they have max HP versus Titans. There's also max HP because you can actually use a Sky Fortress to attack a player's base, which is really interesting. And you can also use Sky Fortresses to attack new Raven structures on the map. And I will actually show you guys some video footage of actually rallying a Sky Fortress and how it actually works, what it looks like, what it looks like when it attacks, all that fun stuff. Okay. Sky Fortresses and Titans do have a bunch of different attributes. They basically have attributes like a unit does. They have speed, firepower, damage, damage resist, and all that good stuff, which is really interesting, okay? So the immediate question that you might be asking yourself is, how do you get one and how do you use it? What does it cost, okay? So first off, that takes us to the Strategic Weapons Center. We go inside of here, um, and actually let's go back out. Let's go into my inventory, go to other. So if you have a Titan or a Sky Fortress, it will be in your inventory. So you can see here, I have a Groundbreaker Titan and I have a Sky uh, Suzerain, if I pronounced that correctly, Sky Fortress, okay? You do not just get a Sky Fortress or Titan uh, just because the update's out. You actually have to acquire them. How do you acquire them? That's through the Strategic Weapons Center by completing R&D research, okay? So there's a new type of item called a R&D chip or advanced chip, that's what you're going to use to research Titans and Sky Fortresses. So what does it cost? Well, it costs either real money because you're gonna purchase gifts or it costs gold. And a single advanced chip, you can see here, it costs 12,000 gold, okay? It's quite a lot. To obtain a Sky Fortress, you can see here, guaranteed Sky Fortress every 50 times you conduct R&D. Okay, so if you do 10 at a time, that's going to cost you 120,000 gold times five, right? That's going to cost you about 600,000 gold 
to acquire a Sky Fortress. And there are, I believe, 10 different types of, uh, or actually maybe it's six, but there are different types of Sky Fortresses and Titans you can acquire. Uh, so I'm assuming each different type has different attributes, but I cannot confirm that. Okay, now I've already spent a bunch of gold to try this, but I'll just show it to you. So we'll go ahead and spend 120,000 gold. Here's the crazy fancy animation. Okay, you do get items for spinning gold. So you get super alloy, which is the new resource, uh, wrenches, ammo, experience. Uh, you do get some regular resources and rush. But uh, for basically 120,000 gold, you effectively get almost nothing, uh, which is really interesting. So. Uh, not a great way to grow, uh, but maybe a great way to get super alloy. I don't know. That's to be seen. Click OK. And we can keep doing that. Let's do another 10. You can also get coupons. Do another 10. Okay. So it looks like you can also acquire them maybe by chance. Uh, so this is kind of on the test server, so this doesn't look like it's complete. <laughs> um, it's a super weapon. Because their spelling is so great. But I have acquired a new Sky Forgers. Okay, click OK. Um, well, actually, it looks like I did. Maybe I did hit the 50. That's hard to say. I was at like 9. I think I only opened 30. Let's try that again. So we're at 3 of 50. Let's do 120,000 gold. Another 10. So that means we're at 23. This should be 33. 43. Okay, so at 43, I did unlock a Sky Forger. So you don't have to go to the full 50, it doesn't seem like. So it looks like you can acquire them by chance. I assume the same thing goes for the Titan. So anyway, let's go back out to my inventory. So now you can see I have three different types of Sky Fortresses in my inventory. I have a Doombringer, Blind Dreadnought, um, and the original one that we had. Okay. So now uh, that's how you're going to acquire Sky Fortresses and Titans. Okay. To use them, once you acquire them, you're going to notice uh, we can go to the Alliance tab and you can go to Alliance Wars. And now you're going to have, aside from army groups, you're going to now have also Sky Fortresses and Titans as tabs. Okay. So that's where you'll see Sky Fortresses and Titans at. Now, to actually make and use a Sky Fortress, um, it's actually kind of like a rally, but uh, I've got this base over here. Uh, like I said, you can actually use them to attack a commander's base. You're going to rally attack. And you're going to basically uh, select your Sky Fortress that you have. And it's essentially you're forming an army group. Uh, just looks a little bit different. You can specify the time that the group will form for. So you can basically give your team members up to 30 minutes to join or you want to do it very fast, five minutes to join. You can also, uh, I don't think you can limit the types of troops, but you can click these icons to recommend certain types of units you would like to see in the Sky Fortress Rally to your Alliance members so they know what to add. And then you, as the uh, person forming the rally, can add one uh, of your troops to the rally, okay? And it costs 400 Super Alloy to start a Sky Fortress Rally, okay? So I'm gonna go and click on that, click Confirm, and that's going to show up in the Alliance Wars tab. Okay, so there you can see it. And people can join your Sky Fortress rally and add their troops to it like they would an army group. Okay. And what's going to happen is when the countdown timer reaches zero, it's going to deploy that Sky Fortress to whatever target you selected. And it's going to go out, it's going to attack, and it's going to return. And I have a video clip that will actually show uh, the Sky Fortress in action. There will also be a icon above your base to show that this uh, the base is currently uh, rallying a Sky Fortress super weapon. Troops that get added to the Sky Fortress rally actually have to go and walk to that commander's base. So if your base is 500 kilometers. For mine and I'm forming a Sky Fortress rally and you send a trip to it, it is going to walk and garrison itself basically inside my base to join my rally. 
So that is something to consider uh, with the way this works. And when the Sky Fortress is done, uh, those units are going to return from my base to yours. Okay, so there is a vulnerability to actually starting a Sky Fortress rally. Now, uh, just so you understand how it works, if I were to cancel this rally, I do get refunded my super alloy because it never actually got deployed. So you don't lose your resources uh, if you're unable to get the rally formed. So we keep talking about super alloy. Let's take a look at that. So you have the new super alloy foundry. So to make super alloy, uh, you can also make super alloy uh, components, which you're going to use apparently for new tech. So that's interesting. Um, so I can use super alloy to do that. So we can forge. Looks like as long as I have super alloy in my inventory, it looks like I can do up to six per day. Let's just go and do all six. Uh, there's also a quick forge. That's interesting. Takes another type of new item called a compressed fuel, which you can purchase using gold. And you can do five of those. I'm assuming five per day, 20,000 gold. Yep, so five per day is the max. Okay. So you can forge super alloy components 11 total times per day if you're willing to spend some gold and you have the super alloy to do so. Okay, so that's forging components. Uh, that's We'll look at the tech research, we'll show that. Uh, but to produce super alloy, you are going to, you guess it, you're gonna spend more resources. You're going to spend steel. <laughs> okay, I don't currently have any steel because I used it all uh, upgrading my tech research for a different video, but um, you're gonna spend steel. Uh, it is going to be like, you know, uh, producing bricks and concrete and asphalt and things like that. And uh, it's going to be on a production timer, just like those resources. And that's how you do super alloy. And you can, looks like your Q is up to 100, uh, 100 max. I'm assuming that can be increased by tech research, but we can take a look. And so that is the super alloy forge. Okay. So these three buildings are effectively combined how Lilith decided to implement super weapons into the game. So along with that, there are two new tech research trees. I have to say I'm personally not happy about that. So there's a new rally tech tree. Okay, All of this tech research is strictly for Sky Fortresses and Titans. So, uh, you know, super ally production, Efficiency, uh, super allies from destroying Raven Fortresses. We'll show you what those look like. Uh, Titan Max HP, go through the tech tree. Extends the range of your Sky Fortress Rally by one village. Uh, that's an interesting thing to talk about. So we'll come back to that. And all the way up here, uh, troop capacity. That's another interesting one. So lots of tech research. This tech research does cost resources. It costs steel. I believe is the resource that this uh, requires to progress your tech research. And I think there's also a, uh, if I recall correctly, these super alloy, I can't show it, but I think those super alloy components are the things that you make from super alloy, I think are effectively equivalent to city contribution coins and how you would use them to upgrade your tech research because there's also an advanced rally tech tree, okay? Uh, and this is all max on the test server, so of course I can't show you the actual costs associated with the tech tree. But same kind of thing, there's a tech tree for Sky Fortresses, we can switch over and there's a tech tree for Titans. And same kind of stuff, Titan Max HP, Super Ally Production, blah blah blah. Uh, Titan Garrison Capacity, so on and so forth, and uh, whatnot and what have you, okay? So lots of new tech research. I'm personally, my opinion on the new tech research is I'm absolutely unhappy about that because 99.9% .9 of players that aren't spending $100,000 a year uh, on the game in a two-year time period have not even completed their basic research trees, yet alone advanced research trees, yet alone now uh, the new super weapon research trees, which will be exclusively utilized by whales, uh, would be my guess. Um, unless a player wants to 
invest and uh, strictly go into the super weapon path of the game and not, I guess, not play with units, I suppose. Um, which is not a thing to comment on. You can't actually attack Sky Fortresses or Titans with normal units, okay? Uh, that is not something you can do. The way super weapons work in the game is you can basically only affect a Titan or attack a Titan uh, with a Sky Fortress. Um, I'm not sure how it's going to work when a Sky Fortress attacks your base. Uh, that would be interesting. Maybe we can show that. Uh, but anyway, uh, we can attack Commander's base. We'll do that in a, a second, I suppose. Um, let's see, what else? Uh, quick jump. There are new Raven uh, structures, so Raven Fortresses. Um, you can only attack these with a Sky Fortress, and just like killing a Raven Bunker, uh, you get uh, Super Alloy as loot. So there's not a Raven drop box from it. Uh, well, I mean, there's a drop box, but you're going to get the rush, the ammo, and a super alloy. Uh, that's basically what these Raven Fortresses are. Uh, that one's level one. This is level one city, so I'm assuming that there are higher level Raven Fortresses in higher level cities, and possibly the Theater of Conquest, which is really interesting. Okay, so I will give you guys my personal opinion on this whole thing. So one, you guys already heard it. I'm really unhappy about the two new tech trees. I think that is really difficult for the majority of the player base to really swallow. But I do think the fact that super weapons cost uh, so much gold, um, the fact that you can acquire them potentially randomly, maybe players will spend a little bit of gold over a long period of time to acquire at least one Sky Fortress or one Titan, which is really interesting. Um, but players that are going to have these right away are basically going to be people with many, many hundreds of thousands of gold. Um, so I don't think these are necessarily going to be seen on the battlefield uh, right away and in large quantities. And uh, same thing goes with Titans. Um, both require just an enormous amount of resources to uh, unlock. And the fact that it requires super alloy to use I do think that is good, uh, that to use them, it requires resources, that way people can't spam super weapons and use them, you know, back to back just constantly. The game really, in my opinion, should still be about normal tanks and helicopters and aircraft and, and just ground and air war with regular units. Uh, it would be very sad to see the game evolve into super weapon gameplay strictly. I think that would just... For me, that would just completely kill any desire uh, to play the game at all unless they released a no super weapons theater of conquest battlefield. And that would be pretty much probably where I would exclusively play because um, I personally have zero interest in the super weapon mechanics that they have introduced here. Uh, but it is a lot. I mean, it's kind of cool. You know, they're trying to keep the game uh, fresh, I guess, and new ways to generate revenue. Um, but anyway, so something else about the super weapons, though, uh, if we notice, um, I mentioned in the tech research that uh, there was one that gave your Sky Fortresses an additional village of range. Um, as far as I understand it, when it comes to attacking a player's base, you can only attack players' bases that are in an adjacent village uh, to yours. So if you're in Theater of Conquest, uh, your territory has to be right up against the enemy's territory uh, to be able to attack their base with the Sky Fortress. You can't just attack anything anywhere on the map. Um, so I guess that's kind of a, a super weapon limitation to help balance uh, their power, uh, which is really interesting.